Hello. We're going to work today out of an acrylic uh, pad. This is heavyweight cold press and it's nine by 12 and it's a Carson pad. So what I love about this pad is that they're very thick, like watercolor almost. And I think we'll get a really nice project done instead of a canvas today, but this is perfect for a canvas also. So I want you to see that it's, um, it's pulsating because it doesn't like the white. All right, so I put all the, add a couple of different size daubers, uh, painter sponge, and which is the Donna Dewberry painter sponge. It comes in a set of two different sponges, two sizes. And then we're using the multi-surface acrylic folk art paint. And I love this paint. Um, I love it because it goes on all surfaces and outdoor, indoor, wood, ceramic tile, you'll love it. All right, so I have started out by putting these colors out and I'm gonna make a beautiful sunset today. So let's start with a sunset and a silhouette of a palm tree. And I think that you'll enjoy what's gonna happen as we do this. I have taken and used a sponge earlier, so it's a little damp, but usually I take a dry sponge, put my fingers in the water, just wipe a little bit of paint. All right, so what's gonna happen first is we want a glowing aqua, aqua color, not this dark aqua. We want to put some white in there so we can get some pretty shades in here. So see the color? We want it to be a really uh, lighter shade of aqua. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start at the top of the paper and it's not gonna roll up and all like, like a razor paper because it's really thick and wonderful. All right, and as we come down, we're going to stop there, but we are gonna have some more aqua down here. So down here's where the horizon would be, okay? So we're gonna, the best way, I've got a hair there, I'm sorry. The best way is to start right here, push your finger down, and pull it straight towards you. All right. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more. All right. And I am, I think I am gonna pull a little bit of neon blue. Now, this is also a folk art color. All of these colors are on onestroke.com. And there's a whole set of neons. Lots of people like them because they give you a color that no other color will give you. There's neon orange, pink, purple, this blue. I use a lot. I love it. All right. And it's going to come right in here. And what it will do is just glow with this vivid, pretty blue that you can't get any other way. That's what I've noticed. It's a pretty color. Okay, now what's gonna happen here is I'm going to flip it and get some more lighter color here. So the horizon's gonna be way, way off in the distance. And then this color will get lighter. Okay, and it's gonna just work in here a little bit and I'm going to leave that. Okay, so now what needs to happen is I'm coming down here with this, um, not this edge, but this edge, blending my color as I come down, right? So I'm going to take and put this sponge away and just dampen a second sponge. It can be the smaller sponge that comes with the set, which I don't see it. Oh, here it is. There's a skinnier sponge. You could use a sponge. Actually, I will. All right, and now I've been on wood surfaces and been real rough with my sponges. <laughs> okay, all right. So now this is, oops, I don't want water on there. I'm gonna mess it up. All right, I drift on there. Now, this is what we wanna do. We want some yellow in our sunset. So I don't know if you can see this picture, but this is the picture I wanna do, okay? So, I, and that's a photograph. I thought it'd be really great for what I want to do today. Now, what we're going to do is we want to blend. If we go like this, we're going to have a hard yellow line there. If we go like this, we blend the yellow into the, the aqua. All right. So 
I'm going to come in here and add some yellow in here. Now, what I did do is add a little bit of white to rub it in. Okay. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the yellow real strong right here in the middle. Okay. This is pretty easy. I'm excited to share this with you. Now, I'm going to go up into the sky. All right. Now, what makes this blend better? Let's just see really close. What makes this blend better is if I put more white. Because I can still, you can leave it just like that. If I just kept doing that while it's wet, if you're on a canvas, this will blend. On this paper, it goes right in. But see those streaks? I'd rather not have all those streaks. So I'm picking up some more white. All right. So now let's take more white into our blue. All right, and also gives a vivid, oops, vivid color in the middle. Okay, the palm tree covers a lot too. All right, so this is sunrise or sunset. All right, now what I did in here, right with this yellow. So think some colors, um, see that blue, aqua, and yellow will make a little bit of a green. But till, I mean, this aqua is kind of till anyway. All right, so I'm going to come in here and get the pure orange. Okay, so what's going to happen here is I'm going to have the hard edge down here and blend the, the orange with, see how it blends in here? Okay, so there's a lot of pretty sunsets that have orange. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go right in the middle because that sun setting. Okay. All right. So there we go. Now, as that picture is here, I can put some little bits of orange in here if I want, or I can just come back in here with white and yellow and Put a little bit more clouding in here. All right, stronger yellow. Just play with it, get it like you want it. All right, now I'm gonna come with the dry edge of this. Aqua and white. Okay, so see all those colors I'm getting? Oops, oh, I need to cover that up with my, uh, with my silhouette. Okay, so down in here, we're gonna get a little bit of yellow. And what I want you to see is this is a reflection from the moon. And all you do is take the sponge, it's a sponge painter, it does amazing things for you. All right, can y'all see that? And you just leave it alone. Usually I go all the way from there down, but because it's up more, you'll see what's going to happen, okay? All right, so I'm going to fold these in half, put them down into the water. And when you put them down into your basin, into the water, it'll keep them from drying up with paint in them. When that happens and you use it again, it leaves a little beady, grainy things all over your painting. So don't do that. So see, that's kind of fun. Then I have these daubers, all right? These daubers uh, are different sizes. I have the yellow and a small too, all right? So go check these out on our site. They're very hard to find anywhere because they're, they're coming from China and almost nobody's selling them. But my husband found a set of, I think, four of these all the way down to a smaller one, not this small. Um, and you can check those out or we have them in our Facebook lives. If you go to our Facebook when we're, um, on, okay, I've got a problem here. I dropped water. I'd like to show you my problems. I didn't do that on purpose, but because if you let it sit, it will take the paint totally off. See this little dot. That means I dropped a little bit of water there. I dropped a big water there, but I rubbed it in. Okay. Now. This is what we need. This speck here is my finger stuck to it. I had paint on my finger. 
but so I know I've got to cover that. All right, so right in here, I am going to pick up with a dry dauber. I'm going to pick up the daffodil yellow and make a circle, which is the size of those yellow, small yellow dauber. All right. You just make a circle until you get it to the size you want. And then you tap. Okay. Now, what I love about this is you can do a you can do your sun that big. You can do it either way. But this photograph shows it like this. And then what happens is it came along here. And it has more yellow. Let's come in closer so you can see. All right. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use my paintbrush to show you. Get, um, get a little. This is a 10, right? No, this is an 8. Okay. So what, a, what it's done is it went from this yellow here. And then it came down a little bit here, all the way down to our sun. Now, sometimes I'll come in with a little bit of white and I'll put a little bit of white in it. You know, so you can do your own licensing. You don't have to do it exactly like the photo photo that you're referencing, okay? And then I can also come in with a little bit of yellow, especially because I have that little problem, okay? And you can also put little bits of white in here. And as it comes to you, it's brighter, all right? A little bit more. Now, isn't that kind of fun so far? Simple little. So this is all how to get a sunset and how to do silhouettes. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to take. Now, if you look at this, it's covering the whole canvas. See, big. All right. So I'm going to come up to here with the trunk and I'm going to let the trunk come right along here, my chalk. And on this side, I have a palm frond that comes down here. So I want to make sure I had enough space. All right. So this is still wet. So I'm not getting the chalk's not working totally like I want it to. But about right here, it has the extra, um, what do you call that? comes off the palm tree. I don't know if y'all know, but there's these husk things that go along the palm. All right. So then I have one coming out here, one that curves there, one that goes all the way off. I could have been a little higher. Let me come a little bit higher. Okay, so then it's coming off. Off. Oh, no, there is a palm next to it that's showing that's coming in. We're not going to do that one. All right, so um, then this last one, I just want to make sure that it doesn't, hit my moon or sun set whatever we're doing here okay so this one came from the middle and laid over all right just a little bit all right can you see that it's like an upside down umbrella all right now now we're gonna get licorice and so at this point I, I do like to use fan brushes or rake brush. Where's my rake brush? All right, so let's pull one of these. I took them all with me to my convention. So let me see that I have it right here. I do. So let's pull a rake brush. Now, this is a rake brush. It's got any bristles right along here. So from there, from here on, it's like you thinned your hair with those scissors, okay? And that helps you. 
and you can also use a fan brush. All right. So the first thing I want to do is take my 16 flat and I want you to see that we're going to dip into water. We usually don't, but I'm going to use water here on this palm more. I usually don't use water at all, but I'm going to use it more than I'm going to use. I would not use floating medium to get this to move smooth. But usually I do use the floating medium. We have it with this project. Okay, ideally you would let your project dry because my finger is sticking to the dampened paint. Okay, so it would be a little bit larger at the bottom. All right, and it would get thinner at the top. Okay, so that's, um, that's your little bit of texture. That's the trunk. Oops. See, don't do what I just did. I got crazy. Okay. So now I'm going to go to my rake brush. And I'm not even putting water on this. I'm going to come in here. And that chalk will wipe right off when we're all dry. So don't worry about the white chalk. So right here is really big because it's got all these husk pieces on the palm. All right. So the first thing I'm doing is this palm frond that's hanging right here. I'm going to chisel edge on the chisel. And it's kind of choppy looking, but that's fine. And that one's going to come down. So look what's going to happen. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to barely touch. I need you to see this. I'm barely touching along here. Now, it does need water. This is not moving for me. So I'm going to come in here with some water. Now, look what happens. As I'm pulling down, you're going to get these nice marks. I can chisel. See the little chisel here? And then I can lay flat so I get multiple fronds, okay? Okay. Now I'm gonna come back with, it's got water still. I'm gonna come back here and that chalk is really showing. Curve and clean it up. Okay, can you see that? Sorry, I was out of the screen. All right, so you don't want it solid in here. All right, I'm getting a little bit more water. So I'm gonna come right up here. Now, what they usually do is they usually just hang one way. Slide, drop, slide, drop, slide, drop, slide, drop. Okay, but what happens with some of these they do kind of come out and go across where they're coming down. Okay. All right. Okay, so now look what's happening. Do you see the silhouette? It's kind of fun. A little bit more water, work it into the licorice. Okay, now I do have one that's coming. It came up and then it just dropped down here. All right, so it's kind of very lightly. You're touching and you're only stroking guys with those last bristles. All right. I'm going to come really close so you're seeing a bit better. All right, so this came off the side, but we're not going quite that big. All right, so remember, it's cut off. So this palm frond's way over here. So I'm going to come down. A little bit more water. Now you don't want so much water that it runs. Okay, so we're gonna 
have the slide drop, slide drop, slide drop. Okay, is that kind of fun? And then we have another one up here. Okay. Okay, so the key is you don't want to start down here and go back because if you get it too bushy here, then what will happen is you can't fix it. It ruins the whole painting. And that's true. All right. So please don't start at the end. I'm going to go ahead and put these other fronds in. You see how quick this project is? All right, so don't start down here. It gets really bushy and then you can't fix it. All right, so this one, I usually tell people not to do two sides. Have one side and have the other ones hanging over. They're hanging like these, but this picture does have them going both sides and it depends on where you're taking the photo from. So I'm going to come down, slide down the center, and pull it, pull it, pull it. Okay. Can you see that? It's kind of interesting. Now, I just want you to see that I have more control with the rake. But if I wet this fan and I put the fan brush in here wet, all right, so let me show you what happens with it. What you have to be careful with this is that you slide and you drop. You slide, drop, slide, drop. All right, now this might be more comfortable for you, but lots of times I have better control of the other one. All right, with the rake. Now that's what happens if it's too watery. It's just a light gray. And then I came back and put more of the regular gray. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and show you one more. But this is the key. Slide, drop, slide, drop, slide, drop. And then smaller, smaller, smaller down here. Can you believe how quick that was? I can also bring some more down here. Okay, we can do a couple up this way. Isn't that nice? Barely touched. So you need to practice before you get on here. You need to practice and make sure that you can do that movement with the with your brush, okay? I'm gonna go back because I need to control this. We'll put one more here. Now what I found. What I have found is that the palm tree looks way better with some down hanging next tight to the tree because these are the ones that are usually dead and somebody has to come trim them off. Okay. Now, what I think that I need on here is that this, um, let me get a smaller brush, let's get a six flat. Let's come in here with a teeny bit of medium. So y'all liking this? It's a little different today, but I wanted y'all to see how to do palm fronds, how to do sunsets, can be any color back there. And this is on the water. 
Okay, so now look what I'm doing. I'm floating some pure orange on the bottom so it kind of glows. All right, and it got a little bit darker out here. Can even be reddish out here. All right, so see, it's got a pretty glow. The pond fronds have colors coming through them. Isn't that fun? So I cannot wait for y'all to paint this and put it on whatever color background. You can have pinks and blues and purples, all kinds of colors in your sunset. And put your palm tree and let us see it. The other thing I like to do is sometimes put some extra colors on the palm fronds I've done before, like a little bits of white for a glare, but you really wouldn't see that, or a little bit of orange into it. Um, I shouldn't do it. I'm just going to show you really quick. If I wanted to grab some orange and put just little highlights. Okay, look, let's come up here. Little bit of orange here and there. See? You don't have to. I saw this Key West artist and she put a lot of pinks and colors in there. Just a little bit. And I'd have to do orange because there's orange. Okay, sign it, share it. Thank you guys. See you next week.